Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Ratnesh Kumar for inviting me here. Uh, I've enjoyed my stay so far, and there's no reason that I will not continue to enjoy my stay here for the rest of the day. OK, there's a bit too much material in, 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 in my talk. So I'm going to leave the slides with uh, Professor Ratnesh Kumar and, and Professor Elia so that those of you who might be interested will uh, look at it in, in greater detail. OK, so now what, what I want to talk about is, is um, there seems to be uh, certain fundamental issues in the field of uh, control, systems and control, which is my major field, communications and information theory. Recently, I would say statistical inference. Um, and uh, this growing interest uh, in the physics community, especially people working in statistical physics, in, in ideas of information uh, and ideas of, of uh, for example, stochastic control. Uh, indeed, I was surprised uh, how big a community there is now in physics looking at these issues. And um, so wh wh what I'm going to suggest is, is that uh, so a caricature of that would be that, right, say, physics, so let's say classical mechanics. So physics, there are several levels of description. There's classical mechanics, there's Newtonian mechanics, and on the other side, there's quantum mechanics, right? And in between, somehow, uh, a statistical sort of mesoscopic description of systems that's important in physics, in particular statistical mechanics. Now, what I'm suggesting is, and physicists have definitely taken note of that, is that when we can make measurements about a system, measurements about a physical system, and you have ability to intervene, right, to control action of one kind, you add a, a, a different dimension to physics. And on the other side, I think the ideas of statistical mechanics in this, in this broader context is relevant to, say, engineering problems of one kind or another. And I, my, my main topic then is to suggest that the fields of information and communication, especially Shannon information theory and control theory, right, the ability to intervene on a system based on information gathered on a system uh, requires new developments, and that's what I'm going to try to illustrate. OK, so as is well known, uh, right, Shannon's information theory, right, it, it codifies the fundamental limitations to reliable information transmission over a noisy channel. In, in a very precise sense. The, the notion of reliable communication is that, that you, you, you're sending some message over a noisy channel, and you're able to recover it right, with an arbitrarily small probability of error. That's the notion of reliable communication. Okay. Statistical inference, I guess I should say machine learning, uh, is, is a is a lot of it is statistical inference of one kind or another. I mean, essentially, the idea is you want to infer hidden information from noisy measurements of observables. By observables, I mean physical things like maybe energy, position, velocity, momentum, etc. And statistical mechanics is the model. It's an ensemble model of, of, of thermodynamics, and I'll say more about that. And what I'm suggesting is that if, if you now wish, wish to control an uncertain dynamical system by exercising control of one kind or another, then, and especially if you want to do it over uh, 
sort of large systems in some sense, I think these fields come together. And what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that there ought to be a thermodynamical theory of estimation, right? Estimation of parameter or estimation of states based on noisy observations. And physicists are, are very much interested in this question at the moment. And what I'm also su su suggesting is that this, this role of information in control, I think, suggests certain uh, explorations in, in old problems, for example, problems of adaptive control, broadly defined, or, or the whole issue of adaptation. I mean, autonomy, for example. I mean, how much autonomy do you need for a system in order to be able to do adaptation? And, and at least in limited situations, these questions could be posed in certain precise sense. And the idea is, is to uh, gain insight from these example problems, which should have sort of broader validity, right? I mean, in some sense, I'm advocating a Shannon style of research of, of looking at small problems, apparently small problems, like looking at the binary symmetric channel and trying to understand its fundamental limitations, and gaining much broader insight from the study of let's call these example problems. OK. So um, I'm going to say something about this, at, at, least, at least define the problem, and, and then come back to it. And, and the problem is, is a simple one. I mean, it's, a, it's an electric circuit. Right, and there's a resistor which is a noisy resistor, a so-called Nyquist-Johnson resistor. So W is supposed to be white noise, right? And and the mod this Nyquist-Johnson model is T is temperature, right? K is Boltzmann's constant, R, and W is white noise, right? And then you have a circuit here, and you could think of this that there's a wire over there. So you could think of that as another resistor at a certain temperature. And the issue is that, uh, so forget this demon and this current I here for a minute. Uh, you can measure, so there's some, some noisy voltage at this point, but you can make a noisy measurement of that voltage, right? And the idea is, w what we wish to codify is that this noisy measurement of this voltage has certain amount of information in a precise Shannon theory sense. And you want to utilize that, that measurement and estimating right, the, the, the state of the system. And based on, uh, on this estimation of the state of the system, you're allowed to, this, this demon is, is, is a controller, it, it injects a current. I mean, so for example, this current could be just positive if the, if the voltage measurement is positive or negative. Okay? And the question you want to ask is, what is the maximum amount of work that you can extract from this apparently passive system by, by interjecting Right, a control action, a feedback control action based on noisy measurements of the system. Okay, and can you pose this this apparently thermodynamic uh, consideration, right, in in our terms, in terms of control and optimization and filtering and so on? So that's the problem. So in order to answer that question, I have to really answer the question is, is that what is the nature of information that you can extract by making a noisy measurements of a physical, of a passive system, right? By actively interacting with it through the exercise of, of injecting this current in an appropriate way based on, right, a feedback control 
based on noisy measurement, based on estimates of noisy measurement. So that's the question. Now, with a, quite a bit of imagination, you could say, well, this is, this is something to do with, with energy harvesting in some sense, that apparently you're extracting work from a passive system by doing some kind of control action. Okay. So I'll, I'll come back to this, uh, I hope. So what I have to now tell you is, is what do I mean by extracting information from these noisy measurements based on a filter? What does that, what does that mean information theoretically? So I have to try to answer that question. So that's what I'll talk about it. And then the, 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 the other question that you want to ask is that, OK, so, so the apparently this, this demon or this, this controller right, is trying to extract the maximum amount of work, by the way, over a finite time. So it's a non-equilibrium situation in some sense. Uh, now, what does this, so the, right, so you're extracting information by estimating the state of the system based on noisy measurements, right? And then you're using this information to exercise control action. So the control action ex has a little bit more information. What is the nature of that information? And is there something like a second law of thermodynamics, right? So that's, that's the question that I want to try to to give you the ingredients of so that one can address questions of this kind. What, what would one would like to do is, of course, as in statistical mechanics, where, where the, the, the dynamical system that you're interested in somehow, for example, its dimension grows to infinity or something like that, right? Uh, but uh, what I'm suggesting is that the Thermodynamics of small systems like a passive electric circuit, essentially a first order system, is, is already of interest. Okay, so that's I mean that's that's the problem that I want to give you the the basic elements of so that you could one could attack problems of this kind. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this. This is a stochastic dynamical description of that circuit, essentially. And then we write down these various laws of thermodynamics. But I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. OK, so, so the, to make the talk somewhat self-contained, so let me start by, by telling you some some very well-known simple facts. And one is the idea of that you have two random variables, x and y. Uh, I don't think I wanted to do that. Right? Discrete random variables for the moment. Then the definition of mutual information between these two random variables, right? which is an average measure of dependency of two random variables, is the expectation of log of the joint distribution with respect to the product distribution averaged over the joint distribution. So this mutual inf information is, is it's, it's symmetric. And if, if I compute the mutual information x with itself, then you just get the entropy of x itself. Okay? So it's an average measure of dependence of two random variables. And it's this mutual information is an example of the general notion of re relative entropy between two probability measures. So if mu and nu are probability, two probability measures on some probability space, then the relative entropy of mu with respect to nu or kullback lieber information is the expectation with respect to mu log of mu over nu. So I'm looking at discrete random variables for the moment. So this is correct. 
if, if we have sort of more general random variables, then we have to take the sort of the density of mu with respect to nu, right? The so-called radon nickel derivative of mu with respect to nu. Now here, here is, is, is an example. If you take omega to be 0, 1, and if you look at two distributions, mu and nu and omega, with these characteristics, so 0, 1, mu of 0 is 1 minus r, r and s are parameters. And then you can compute this, the relative entropy. And you note that the relative entropy of mu with respect to nu and relative entropy of nu with respect to mu are not the same. And then you also know that if r equals s, then these two relative entropies are equal and equal to 0. And you, uh, you can explicitly, if r equals half and s equals uh, quarter, then you can compute the, the relative entropy. So the interpretation of relative entropy of mu with respect to nu is that if you believe that a certain random object has probability measure nu to be correct, but if it actually is mu, so this is the information gain of the information contained in mu relative to nu. So that's the sort of interpretation. So there's a story is goes that uh, when Shannon, you, by, by the way, in, in, in a discrete setting, uh, if, if nu is, is the so-called counting measure, and if mu is discrete, then, then you just get the entropy. Now, the, the story is that uh, when Shannon discovered his concept of entropy and wanted to call it his concept of information, and he went and talked to von Neumann, saying, well, he had this concept of information. What should you call it? So von Neumann suggested, well, you should call it entropy, because nobody really know what that is. So anyway, so here are some properties. Firstly. The relative entropy of mu with respect to nu is always non-negative. It's equal to 0, mu equals nu. And it's jointly convex in mu and nu. But it's not symmetric. It doesn't satisfy the triangle inequality either. So it defines some pseudo-distance pseudo between two measures mu and nu. OK? So I need this idea of mutual information and relative entropy. Now, for what I'm going to talk about later is that I want to talk about dynamical systems. So you have some nonlinear system which is being forced by some scaled white noise. So this is a sort of a formal, imprecise way of writing this. So you think of white noise really as the derivative, formal derivative of of Brownian motion. And you rewrite that as an integral equation. So this is a correct way of describing this stochastic dynamically, dynamical system, where this is some kind of an integral, a so-called Ito integral. But that's, that's not important. It's just a nonlinear dynamical stochastic dynamical system, quite a general kind. OK, so, so this is important. Well, we're interested in, in, in dynamical systems, dynamical behavior. So, the, so, the, so the, the, the main object of interest are the trajectories of the state process x, right? So for each omega, right, we have a random trajectory, right? Now. So uh, I guess in signals and systems, right, we would call this a waveform, right? So I want to think of this random trajectory or this waveform real as a random variable, right? This is a random variable. By the way, our friend Al Drake used to say a random variable is neither random nor a variable, right? It's a, it's a function. So, uh, 
So this random variable, this random trajectory is a function from some sample space omega into some continuous function or something like that, right? But I want to think of, designate that as a capital X and there's a random variable, some kind of an abstract random variable. So everything that I'm about, that I said about discrete random variables, I can also define for continuous random variables, okay. Now, in thermodynamics, there's a, there's a cl close relationship between sort of energy and this relative entropy, and, and that is in some sense related to, not in some sense, exactly related to a, a thermodynamic description of, of, of a system in equilibrium with some kind of a heat bath. Right, and ultimately related to the second law of thermodynamics. But so let me make that uh, more precise. So, so first I define the sample set. So uh, I mean, I have an example here. So th this is an, what I'm showing here is an example of a so-called Ising model. Here. So what you have to imagine that at each lattice point, there's a random variable sitting there, okay? Taking values in some finite set, in, in, in this case, zero, one. And S is this, this bounded set. So omega is all functions from S to zero, one, right? That's what omega is. And we, we have an energy def definition of an energy function which is sort of quadratic in omega. J i j is, is, is what couples i to j. And this notation means that you, you sum only over, over nearest neighbors. So if you look at this point in, uh, in, in, in the lattice, its neighbors are, for example, these one, four points, points that are one distance apart. So this is some kind of an energy function. And, and this is sort of, a, a Markov random field, right? I mean, in a Markov chain, you have the point, right, dependent only on, say, the past, the immediate past. But here, we, we have a more general notion of Markovianity, right? It, so the random variable here interacts with these four points, its nearest neighbors. Okay. All right. So that's what omega is. And here, I, I write down a general energy function, right? You, you have some notion of potential, right? So this could be some quadratic function of, uh, should be an omega, by the way. And, right, so the, the support of this potential is some smaller set, the nearest neighbors, for example. Okay, and there's this idea of a Gibbs measure what is it? It's exponential. So this is some, to think of that energy function of which I gave you an example. Uh, this is exponential of minus h of omega. And z, so-called partition function, right? So 1 over z, that's some normalization. Right? So z is just the sum over omega. So everything is finite, exponential of minus h omega. OK? So I've given you an example there. Now, OK, so there will be two probability measures, right? There's the, there's the measure nu, the so-called Gibbs measure, which is a, a thermodynamic description of the state in equilibrium with some heat bath. And nu is some other measure some other probability measure on that sample space, right? So there are two objects here. So mu of omega is, h of omega is just the average energy, right? A average of this Hamiltonian energy with respect to mu. And h of mu is the entropy, right? Everything is finite, so this is like minus pi log pi, right? 
And then if you look at this quantity here, right, the average energy minus the entropy plus the log of the partition function. But this is a very important quantity because all thermodynamic information is codified in this logarithmic, <laughs> right? I mean, those of you who are interested in stochastic combinatorial optimization, the, the log partition function is the thing that you would like to compute uh, explicitly in some sense. When you, when you work this out, that is just the relative entropy of mu with respect to nu. And we've already shown that that is not negative. And that h of mu nu is equal to 0, if and only if mu equals nu. We just showed that. And this f of mu, which is the, the measure, the average energy minus the entropy is the so-called free energy. This is the energy that's available to you in order to do work. Okay. And the, the so-called Helmholtz free energy, f of nu, is just minus log of z. So this is an easy calculation. What you use here is really Jensen's inequality, right? OK. Now, it turns out that these, these ideas can be generalized to infinite systems. And in work that I've done, what I've shown is that Shannon's noisy channel coding theorem, what, what does that say? It says that, that there's a characterization of the channel in terms of its capacity, right? The capacity is the maximization of the mutual information between, say, the inputs and outputs over all possible input distributions. And Shannon's Noisy channel coding theorem says that if you transmit information at a rate which is less than the capacity, then you can recover the message reliably in the sense that you can recover it with arbitrarily small probability of error. And if you transmit at a rate above capacity, right, then you, then you cannot, right, the so-called Converse theorem. Now, I, I was told by my student, La Vashne, that Shannon had written himself that, that when, when we understood information theory deeply, it would look like thermodynamics. And, uh, and indeed, what one, can, what, what one can show is that the noisy channel coding theorem, at least the direct part, can be viewed as a problem in free energy minimization as you for example, make the block lengths become larger and larger, right? So the idea is you, you want to estimate the message or the source that you're sending over the channel given noisy observations as a Bayesian inference problem and understand its behavior as, as the size of the problem becomes larger and larger. Okay, so, the, so there is a close connection between statistical mechanics and, and and uh, information theory. And this, this whole idea of how to extract work, right? I just mentioned that free energy is the amount of energy that's available to do work. So that relates to, the, to what I've been trying to say about the, this noisy electrical circuit, right? You have a passive electric circuit. You want to extract work out of it to, to, to uh, estimating the state and then exercising control based on the state estimation. OK. OK, so there is, uh, there is a, another object that plays an important role in, in, for example, in estimation theory, right? So the differential entropy of a random variable is a measure of its descriptive complexity in some sense. On the other hand, Fisher information, it's a measure of minimum error in estimating a parameter. And some of you who have taken a course in estimation detection know that's related to the kramer rao lower bound, namely the estimation error is right, lower bounded by 1 over the Fisher information. Okay. 
and what the Fisher information in the form that I'm interested in is. So I, I look at the parametric dependence of the density function x with respect to theta as, a, as, a, as f of x minus theta. This, this could be written more generally. Then the, the Fisher information, j of x, is right. So yes. So the gra I mean, this is the gradient of f of x of f. Of x. There should be a whole bracket round log, right? Squared dx. So what I've done so far is is I've done three things. I, I, I I've sort of defined Shannon's idea of what information is. I've defined uh, also this this. Uh, I've stated Shannon's noisy coding theorem as a fundamental limitation to reliable communication, and the Fisher information as, as in some sense, uh, measuring the estimation error in estimating a parameter of a distribution, right? And how the Fisher infant provides a lower bound to the estimation error. OK, now uh, forget what's, no, I don't want you to forget as yet. Uh, sorry. So what, what, what I want to say here is, is okay. OK, so now I, I want to look at a continuous time Markov process, stationary. Forget all the notation. And suppose this Markov process has a probably has a density. Call it P of x. Then we're interested in how the density evolves in time. And what the density evolves in time, so so you have a sort of continuous time Markov process, which has a dynamical description, has some noisy, noisy uh, right, some, some noisy dynamical system, right, where the no noise is some scaled white noise, right? And there is an operator, the so-called diffusion operator, which describes, right, how the density evolves in time, right? So, what I'm suggesting is that the, if, you, if you have a stochastic process as a Markov process or something, I mean, the thing that you're interested in computing are, are the moments, for example, are functionals of that, right? Functionals of that probability distribution, right? I mean, those are the, obs those are the ob observables, right? Things like energy and so on. And I assume that the that this, this stochastic dynamical system, right? I'm saying the most important quantity is, is the density, that there is an invariant measure, right? There's a steady state density which I call which I call P of S. Now in terms of what I've described before, I can, I, I can mimic now the calculation that, that I did on a finite system. Namely, the free energy is the average energy minus entropy. In this case, it just needs a little bit more technology to do that. And so this object, right, minus log of P of S of X is the Helmholtz free of energy, right? Everything that I did before, I can do there. And then, then the Gibbs measure is the thermodynamic equilibrium, right? Tells you the, uh, uh, right, as minimization of, the, of, the, of this uh, Gibbs measure, yeah, right? I mean, gives you a characterization of, of a system in thermodynamic. All that I could do for 
probability densities of Markov processes, right? Needs a little bit more technology. And what's the, uh, what's the physical meaning of free energy? Oh, that's the amount of energy that's available to you. So you have this thermodynamic system interacting with the heat bath, and it's exchanging energy and entropy. And that's the amount of energy that's left for you to do work. Right. So the, the, the energy function will, will enter into the, the thermodynamic description of, uh, I mean, energy, energy is a, one of the observables, right? So. So you can define free energy for any random variable? Any, uh, In principle, yes. If you compute the average energy minus the. Uh, okay. Now, I mean, I wrote down this potential over subsets. But, but actually, those subsets have to be carefully chosen. They, they really have to be the cliques of, of a graph. So that Gibbs measure and Markov fields are an equivalence. But aside from that, yeah. Now, you can state the, uh, I mean, a version of the second law of, of of thermodynamics is that the entropy of the closed system is maximized by this invariant distribution P of S and it's non-decreasing. You could think of this as a second law of thermodynamics for the system sigma x, namely the nonlinear dynamical system caused by white noise. OK, so I need one other idea. And this is the idea of a dissipative system, right? A dissipative system is an abstraction, say, of, of, of energy ideas in circuit theory, namely the input energy or the input up, input power, plus the stored energy has to be greater than or equal to the output power or output energy, right? So this is, so this S function is, an abstraction of stored energy in some sense. And it says that the, the, the storage function, or the, the stored energy at the initial time, plus W of t is, is the rate at which energy is being supplied to the system, must be greater than or equal to the uh, storage at the end of, say, time 1, at the end of Right, going from T0 to T1. OK. So now I want to introduce observations. OK. So before, I was talking about this X of S, this Markov process, which had a dynamical description. And it has a description at the ensemble level in terms of the probability density. And now let's say you make some noisy observation of the state, excess, right? So you should think of this as, if, if I wrote it as y of t equals g of x, g of x t plus white noise. So this will be a typical signal versus noise model of a measurement, OK? And this just says that this this noise, this nonlinear function of the state has finite energy, natural assumption. OK, so here I have a picture of, of the famous Kalman filter. So there are two parts, right? This part here, right, describes a stochastic dynamical system where what should be here is x dot is, say, beta of t times g of t plus f of t x of t, a linear stochastic dynamical system. h is the output map, which is noisy. So noise enters here, right? And 
what the so-called what does the Kalman filter do? The Kalman filter. So the problem is to estimate the state x of, at time t, given observations y of t, so y of s from 0 to t, right? So you have a signal plus noise model. And you want to estimate the state. And what the Kalman filter says is that you create a model of the system. On the basis of the model, you predict what your observation should be. And then you make a new measurement, and you correct. Correct appropriately through, a, through an appropriate feedback gain. Okay. And the question that I'm right, I mean, there are various ways you can think of the Kalman filter. One way is to say that the estimate is some least squares estimate observing y between 0 and t, right? based on these noisy observations. That's one way. A more general way is to think of the conditional distribution of the state x of t given observations from 0 to t. Right? The conditional distribution is a sufficient statistic in some sense. Now the question I'm interested in is the following. that we want to study the information flow from the initial state and the running observations, right? So a filter, an estimator, is really a map from the observations into the conditional distribution, right? I mean, that's really like a dynamical system, right? We can describe how the conditional distribution evolves in time in terms of some partial differential equation. Now the question I'm interested in is that, and I think this is of, 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 of general interest, is what is the nature of the information flow? Right? Initially, at time 0, there's information contained in the initial condition, which is some noisy object. And you're collecting information based on observations. Based on these two things, right, you're estimating the state of the system. So the information flows from the observation and the initial condition into the filter, which is a conditional distribution. Can we describe what this nature of information flow? Right, this question is, is more of more general interest that in terms of the circuit, noisy circuit that I'm describing. I mean, I would like to understand, or we ought to try to understand, what information does the controller extract from the noisy observation in order to maximize the work from this noisy electric circuits? I mean, you, you could sort of pose that with some imagination as somehow from vibratory motion or something like that, you're trying to extract energy. And if you pose a stochastic formulation of that, I mean, that becomes like a thermodynamics problem. Okay. All right, so the question is, what is, info, what is, what do we write? What we would like to answer is, well, is, is this information flow conservative? Right? Is this like a lossless electric network where the initial energy and plus the stored energy has to be equal to the output energy? Or is it dissipative? I mean, are we losing information? Or should we be? Is, is certain information not required you know, for the task that you're interested in? So in, if you're interested in issues of adaptive control, I mean, if you have to explore the environment, right? how much energy or, or, or should, should, you, should you allocate for the exploration part, right? understanding the environment, and how much energy should you be allocating in order to sort of bring the system in equilibrium, say, with the environment? So can one, I mean, I've, 
I certainly don't know how to do these things uh, in general. But I mean, here, here, here is what is interesting. So, so <coughs> instead of supply of energy, I have to tell you what the supply of information is. So that's, in some sense, the total. By the way, I is, is always mutual information. So this is the x of s, the state over 0 t. And y of s, right, you have measurements only up to time t. But potentially, you could have x of s over all 0 t, because the dynamical system is given. Right? What is the story of information? Well, you're interested in understanding the state only at present, not the whole trajectory. So you can write down what the, what the storage of information should be. And it turned out that if you look at the, the, the difference between the supply and the storage, namely S of t minus C of t, it has, it has an interpreted as dissipation. And the interesting result is that the, what the filter or the optimal estimator does, it stores that information that is needed in order to understand the present. And it dissipates historical information at a rate given by the Fisher information. And this Fisher information here as an interpretation, as, as a conditional mutual information, sort of an average conditional mutual information. So what I'm getting at is, is that not only is the common filter optimal, say, in some least square sense or maximum likelihood sense. And all. It's also optimal in this precise informational sense. Now I can go back to the circuit example. I can answer the question, what information must the controller extract from the Kalman filter right? in this precise sense? I mean, what, what information should, is extraneous to what it wants to do? You could ask question is what is the min in order to accomplish a certain certain control task, how much information, what is the minimal am amount of information that you need? Okay, so um, I mean I'll sh let me just show you one example. This is the rate at which the dis dissipation uh, differential equation for the dissipation itself. And you, you will note, so psi of t is a conditional distribution. The parameter is y now. So this is like a Fisher information, this grad log of. So this is sort of square of the gradient of log of psi t, which is the conditional distribution with respect to p of t squared. Right? Quite a beautiful result, in my opinion. OK, I think I have. Maybe five minutes. Um, so the last part of my talk is a, is a bit pretentious, but uh, let me. Uh, so the, the, the two parts of this, uh, one part is, is looking back. So I, I want to suggest that there would not be any digital revolution without two things, uh, which happened uh, coincidentally, in 1948, namely, both in the Bell Labs, namely the discovery of the transistor and Shannon's paper on theory of reliable communication. By the way, it's interesting, Shannon never used the word information in the title of the paper, which is. Uh, okay. Now, in a similar way, right, of course, there was Turing's work, there was all this automata theory. But, but really, it's the idea of a for Norman architecture, right? Which is quite different from, from Turing machine and so on. I mean, that's what gave rise to the digital computer industry. Uh, actually, I had, I had a quote. Uh, I hope it's, I find it. Yeah. Now, it's very interesting uh, that uh, Sidney Brenner, in, in something that he wrote at the anniversary of the 
of the Turing Centennial that he claims that the, I mean, the famous theorem in, in Turing machine theory, that there's a universal Turing machine which can simulate any other Turing machine. I mean, that, that idea has some bearing on the fact that, uh, that, uh, that it has this embodiment in biology where every organism contains an internal description of itself. I mean, in, in control theory, there's something called an internal model principle that, for example, if you want to reject disturbances stably, then you actually, the controller must embody a description, right, a model of the disturbance itself. Uh, maybe even Nicola remembers that in all this verification of, of systems and so on, digital verification, it seems like you have to you really have to embed the theory according to which, suppose you want to verify whether a control design is, is working exactly as you as you expected it to work after conversion into finite atomic and so on, then it seems that you have to have a description of the theory which led to the control design into the verification process itself. Um, now, I, I, I claim that, uh, that some, if you want to understand issues of autonomy and so on in transportation and energy, etc., then I mean, I think the ideas of information and control somehow needs to come together. And lastly, that uh, I think ideas of Quantum communication, computation, although quantum computation may, be, may has, hasn't, has certainly not uh, given rise to a physical realization of a quantum computer, but I think the ideas of, of the ability right, to intervene at the atomic and molecular level requires that in future we'll have to worry about quantum physics in the design of circuits, devices, and systems. Okay, uh, I'm suggesting all this as a counterpoint to big data and data science that uh, there's perhaps no substitute for the role of ideas and uh, I'll end with this. <laughs>